Good afternoon and welcome to our daily devotions where we are looking at the women of the Bible. This is our 14th woman that we're now entering in and last week we looked at Deborah who became what they called the mother of Israel as she listened to the Lord and was able to hear the Lord amidst all the confusion and the noise and was able to direct Israel out of oppression against the Canaanites again for another 40 years. Now this week we're focusing on Jael who also had an integral part to play in all of that. So this is part one of five as we look at Jael. Let's take a look at her story. Her character. Decisive and courageous, she seized the opportunity to slay an enemy of God's people. Her joy, to be lauded by Deborah and Barak for her part in a decisive victory. Key scriptures, Judges chapter 4 and 5. Her story. Jael watched uneasily through the flaps of her tent as clouds swept the blue from the sky and rain fell like a shroud across the horizon. Cesera, she knew, had marched to Tabor. But what good were iron chariots in a flooded valley, she wondered. Yet the Israelites were poorly armed, with little chance of prevailing. Still, she remembered the stories of Moses and the people he had led across the wilderness. Had their God, she wondered, been asleep these many years? The sight of a man running, then stumbling towards her, interrupted her thoughts. A soldier fleeing. Was he Israelite or Canaanite? His identity might reveal the way the winds of battle were blowing. She went out to meet him, surprised to find that Caesarea himself was approaching, dirty and bleeding. Come, my lord, come right in. Don't be afraid. She welcomed him. I'm thirsty, he said. Please give me some water. Instead, Jael opened a skin of milk and gave him a drink. Stand in the doorway of the tent, he told her. If someone comes by and asks you, is anyone here, say no. As soon as Caesarea fell into an exhausted asleep, Jael picked up a tent peg and hammer. Her arm was steady, her aim sure. Hadn't she been in charge of the tents all these years? Quickly, she thrust the peg through his temple and into the ground. Like a piece of canvas fixed in place, Caesarea was great, the great general lay dead, slain by a woman's hand, just as Deborah had prophesied to Barak. Was Jael a hero, an opportunist? or merely a treacherous woman. It is difficult to know. She and her husband, Heber, were Kenites, members of a nomadic tribe whose survival depended on its ability to stay clear of local disputes. Her husband had made his peace with the Canaanites despite his descent from Hobab, Moses' brother-in-law. Perhaps ancient ties had no longer seemed expedient considering the power of the Canaanite rulers. But Jael may have believed in Israel's God, or perhaps she merely wanted to curry favour with the Israelites. The day's clear winners. Certainly, Barak and Deborah approved of her, singing, Most blessed of women be Jael, the wife of Heber the Kenite, most blessed of tent-dwelling women. He asked for water and she gave him milk. In a bowl fit for nobles, she brought him curdled milk. Her hand reached for the tent peg, her right hand for the workman's hammer. She struck Caesarea. She crushed his head. She shattered and pierced his temple. At her feet he sank. He fell, there he lay. At her feet he sank. He fell. Where he sank, there he fell dead. Judges chapter 5 verses 24 
to 27. Jael's treachery and Deborah's gloating strike us as bloodthirsty, all the more so because we don't usually attribute such behaviour to women. But by the standards of ancient warfare, both were heroes. Both were decisive and courageous women who helped God's people at a critical moment in history. Thank you for listening. I'm not sure if I was expecting that, but um, <laughs> God was able to use J jail in in quite an unusual way to what you would um, have normally expected. I don't know how you feel about the way in which JL responded, but we'll reflect on that this week. So please join me again tomorrow as we take a look at her life and times with a specific focus on bottles. Stay safe, keep praying and stay blessed. Good afternoon and welcome to our daily devotions where we are looking at the women of the Bible. This week we are focusing on Jael and today we're looking at her life and times with a specific focus on bottles. This is part two of five. Bottles. When Caesarea asked for a drink of water and Jael instead gave him milk, she was offering the best of the house. People of the area prized this drink, which was made by putting goat's milk into an old skin bottle and shaking it. The milk then curdled or fermented when mixed with the bacteria that remained in the skin bottle from a prior use. But what on earth is a skin bottle? Nomadic desert peoples who were frequently on the move found skin flasks much more useful than clay bottles which broke easily. Women sewed goat or lamb skins together with the hairy part of the skin on the outside, then sealed them so they would hold water, milk, wine or other liquids. Hagar carried a skin of water into the desert with her. In Genesis chapter 21 verses 14 to 15, Jael offered Caesarea a drink of milk from a skin bottle in Judges 4, chap Judges 4, verse 19. Hannah brought a skin of wine along when delivering her son Samuel to Eli the priest in 1 Samuel, chapter 1, verse 24. David carried a skin of wine to his brothers in 1 Samuel 16, verse 20. Jesus talked about not putting new wine into old brittle wine skins in Matthew chapter 9 verse 17. Christ's decree not to put new wine in old wine skins has of course significant meaning for us today. Are your mind and heart like an old wine skin, brittle, hard, tough, ready to burst when faced with new ideas or new ways of doing things? especially in with what we're going through right now, with these uncertain times and new ways of life that we are encountering? Are we ready to burst when faced with new ideas or new ways of doing things? Or are your mind and heart supple, soft and flexible like a new skin? Are you open to learning new things about your community of believers, about yourself, or even about God. We are now going to listen to Judges chapter 4, verses 11 to 22. Now Heber the Kenite, a descendant of Moses' brother-in-law, Hobab, had moved away from the other members of his tribe and pitched his tent by the oak of Zaananim near Kedesh. When Sisera was told that Barak, son of Abinoam, had gone up to Mount Tabor, he called for all 900 of his iron chariots and all of his warriors, and they marched from Harasheth Hagoyim to the Kishon River. Then Deborah said to Barak, Get ready, this is the day the Lord will give you victory over Sisera, for the Lord is marching ahead of you. So Barak led his 10,000 warriors down the slopes of Mount Tabor into battle. When Barak attacked, the Lord threw Sisera and all his chariots and warriors into a panic. 
Sisera leaped down from his chariot and escaped on foot. Then Barak chased the chariots and the enemy army all the way to Harasheth Hagoyim, killing all of Sisera's warriors. Not a single one was left alive. Meanwhile, Sisera ran to the tent of Jael, the wife of Heber the Kenite, because Heber's family was on friendly terms with King Javan of Hazor. Jael went out to meet Sisera and said to him, Come into my tent, sir. Come in, don't be afraid. So he went into her tent, and she covered him with a blanket. Please, give me some water, he said. I'm thirsty. So she gave him some milk from a leather bag and covered him again. Stand at the door of the tent, he told her. If anybody comes and asks you if there is anyone here, say no. But when Sisera fell asleep from exhaustion, Jael quietly crept up to him with a hammer and tent peg in her hand. Then she drove the tent peg through his temple and into the ground. And so he died. When Barak came looking for Sisera, Jael went out to meet him. She said, Come, and I will show you the man you are looking for. So he followed her into the tent and found Sisera lying there dead, with the tent peg through his temple. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will now reflect on the following question. What was God's role in these events? Thank you for listening. An interesting analogy there, taking a look at how prepared we are when faced with adversity in comparison with the use of animal skins instead of clay for bottles in her time. Please join me tomorrow as we take a look at her promise. Stay safe, keep praying and stay blessed. Good afternoon and welcome to our daily devotions where we are looking at the women of the Bible. Today, this week we're looking at Jael and today we're looking at her promise. This is part three of five. Her promise. Behind the story of Jael and the death of Sisera is a God who promised never to forget his people and who holds to that promise. When hope seems dim, and the prospect of victory seems close to impossible, God is at work, bringing about his plan. The people of Israel during the time of the judges must have warned God to exasperation with their continual wavering. When times were good, they easily forgot God and went their own way. But as soon as times got tough, they went running to him for deliverance. Sounds like anyone you know? The story of the wavering of God's people continues even today. We so easily move forward on our own, thinking we can handle it all, until we run up against something too hard for us. Only then do we run to God for help. But what an amazing God he is. Always there, always willing to rescue us when we call. Always willing to forgive. Some promises in scripture. Nehemiah chapter 9 verses 28. When they cried out to you again, you heard from heaven and in your compassion you delivered them time after time. Psalm 18 verses 1 and 3. I love you, O Lord, my strength. I call to the Lord who is worthy of praise and I am saved from my enemies. 2 Corinthians 1 verses 8 to 11 We were under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure, so that we despaired even of life. Indeed, in our hearts we felt the sentence of death. But this happened that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God, who raises the dead. He has delivered us from such a deadly peril, and he will deliver us. On him we have set our hope, that he will continue to deliver us as you help us by your prayers. We will now listen to Judges chapter 4 verses 17 to 20 again in order to reflect on the questions. Meanwhile, Sisera ran to the tent of Jael, the wife of Heber the Kenite, because Heber's family was on friendly terms with King Javan of Hazor. Jael went out to meet Sisera and said to him, Come into my tent, sir. Come in, don't be afraid. So he went into her tent, and she covered him with a blanket. 
Please, give me some water, he said. I'm thirsty. So she gave him some milk from a leather bag and covered him again. Stand at the door of the tent, he told her. If anybody comes and asks you if there is anyone here, say no. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Question number one. Use three adjectives to describe Jael before she kills Sisera. Pretend you don't know what she's going to do and describe her just from the reading that we just heard. Question number two. Why do you think Jael did what she did? Do you see her as brave, fearful, desperate, treacherous? How much do you think her life experience in a brutal culture had to do with it? Thank you for listening. Again, uh, a good way to reflect on how easily, you know, we, we try to take on things on our own strength and not rely on God's plan. And how when things look impossible, that anything is possible with God. So I encourage you to stay close to God. Stay close to be in your relationship with God. Stay close, being in consistent conversation with God. In order to know that he is always there. He is always in control. And what might look as impossible is possible with God. Thank you for listening. Please join me tomorrow as we look at her legacy of prayer. Stay safe, keep praying, and God bless. Good afternoon and welcome to our daily devotions where we are looking at the women of the Bible. This week we are focusing on jail and this is part four of five where we look at her legacy of prayer. Judges, chapter 5, verses 24 to 27. Most blessed of women be Jael. She struck Sisera. She crushed his head. She shattered and pierced his temple. At her feet he sank. He fell. There he lay. We can reflect on Judges, chapter 5. We can praise God that he defeats the enemies of our soul. We can offer thanks that we can be instruments of deliverance for others. We can confess any tendency toward passivity in your struggle against sin and Satan. And we can ask God to give you wisdom and discernment in the spiritual battle. We will now reflect on the following questions. Number one, why do you think Deborah praised Jael for such a savage deed? Question two, what do you think God wants us to take away from the story of Deborah, Barak and Jael and all of the death woven within it? Thank you for listening. Please join me tomorrow when we look at how we can respond and lift our hearts. Stay safe. Keep praying. God bless. Good afternoon and welcome to our daily devotions where we are looking at the women of the Bible. This week we are focusing on jail and today is our final session, part five of five, where we look at how we can lift our hearts. How we can lift our heart. Sometimes we are naive about the kinds of spiritual struggles that we face as Christians. Ephesians 6 talks about the importance of putting on the full armour of God in order to successfully engage in battle. This week, take some time for a wardrobe check. Make sure you aren't missing anything vital, without which you will be more vulnerable to attack. Here's a quick checklist for the well-dressed spiritual warrior. The Belt of Truth. Have any small dishonesties crept into your life? The breastplate of righteousness. Are you cooperating with grace to become more Christ-like? The shoes of the gospel of peace. The gospel reconciles us to God and others. 
Are you willing to receive it, live by it and share it? The shield of faith. Are you responding to life with faith or in a way that shows you really don't think God is quite as loving or as powerful as he says he is? The helmet of salvation. Salvation is a gift, but like any gift, it has to be received. The sword of the spirit. God's word wounds the enemy and thwarts his purposes. Reading and praying through scripture prepares us to attack. Let us pray. Lord, help me to be ready so that at any moment I can stand against the enemy and even deal a decisive blow in the battle. Give me courage, discernment and wisdom and help me to stay close to you in the midst of the fray. Amen. Thank you for joining me this week as we reflected on JL. It's been an interesting week um, to know that anything is possible with God. So please do encourage you all to reflect on the armour of God and how being able to put on the armour of God in, the, in these, very much in these uncertain times as we're experiencing things that seem impossible. May we stand on the promise and know that God is always there and that anything is possible with God. Have a great weekend. Please join me next week as we look at Delilah. Stay safe, keep praying and God bless.